angular momentum. So our goals here are to introduce the concept of angular momentum, and then we'll look at a very familiar case of angular momentum conservation, and we'll also look at how linear momentum is connected to angular momentum. Okay, so angular momentum is represented by the letter L. Our basic equation is L is I times omega. I there is the rotational inertia. Angular momentum is a vector. It points in the direction of the angular velocity. If there is no net torque acting on a system, then the system's angular momentum is conserved. But if there is a net torque, then you get a change in angular momentum, and that is equal to the torque multiplied by the time interval during which the torque was applied. Now, if you watched our momentum movie, you would have seen a screen very similar to this one, where it said momentum, momentum of a, of a moving object is represented by P. Our basic equation for momentum is P equals mv. That's point one. Point two, momentum is a vector pointing in the direction of the velocity. Point three was, if there's no net force acting on a system, the system's momentum is conserved. And point four was, a net force produces a change in momentum that is equal to the force multiplied by the time interval during which the force was applied. So you can see there are just an analogous set of statements for angular momentum as there were for linear momentum. Okay, so let's get to that familiar example of angular momentum conservation. And that's just a figure skater. So the skater starts spinning with her arms outstretched. She has a rotational inertia initially of I, I, initial angular, uh, initial rotational inertia, and an initial angular velocity of omega I. When she moves her arms close to her body, she spins faster. Well, why is that? Well, moving her arms in causes her rotational inertia to decrease. So, to keep the angular momentum constant, her angular velocity must increase. So, let's see that in symbolic form. So, conserving angular momentum means L initial equals L final. Remember, L is our symbol for angular momentum. And if we expand these out, we get I initial times omega initial is I final omega final. So what's happening there when she moves her arms close is that I final is less than I initial, and so omega final must be more than omega initial. She spins faster. All a consequence of conservation of angular momentum. Okay, so let's try and connect angular momentum with linear momentum. Turns out, angular momentum is connected to linear momentum in the same way the torque is connected to force. So remember our torque equation said torque is RF sine theta. Our angular momentum equation is, in addition to L is I omega, it's L is RP sine theta or L is RMV sine theta. So let's say, let's look at these in a little more detail. Let's say we take an object, kind of a diamond shape, this one, We'll pick an axis, and we will apply a force on that object. How do you find the torque on that due to that force? So what we can do is extend the line of the force, make it as long as we want. We can use the lever arm method to measure, calculate the torque. We measure R along that perpendicular line, that line that meets the force line at a 90 degree angle, and we get torque is RF sine of 90 in that particular case. The equivalent thing for angular momentum is to find an axis. You don't need an object in this case. To find an axis, there is a linear momentum, P is mv, and we can extend the line of that vector, make it as long as we want, and again, we can measure r this way or any other way we want from the axis to the line of the force, but it's convenient to measure along this uh, shortest distance, the lever arm, and we get angular momentum basically convert that linear momentum into an angular momentum. So with respect to that point in space shown by the axis, where the axis is, there is an angular momentum around that point. And it's mv times r times sine of theta. 
Okay, one other thing to note. We often talk about clockwise and counterclockwise when we talk about directions of angular momentum, or angular velocities, or torques. But it turns out that you can really use your right hand to figure out the true direction. Okay, it's not really clockwise or counterclockwise, it's along a particular direction in space. So, what you do is you take your right hand, it's called the right hand rule, so you use your right hand to do it. Curl your fingers on your right hand in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. You're curling them in the direction that the object is spinning or in the object, the, the way the torque is going or the angular momentum is going. Stick your thumb out and it points in the direction of the vector. Okay, so for instance, if we have a disk and it is rotating counterclockwise, you curl your fingers counterclockwise, hold them in front of you, stick your near thumb points toward you out of the screen, right? So that true direction of the angular velocity and angular momentum in that case is out of the screen. On the other hand, that disk is rotating clockwise instead. Okay, so you turn your hand around, so your fingers hold your hand in front of your face, between your face and the screen, curl your fingers clockwise, point your thumb out, your thumb points into the screen, and that is the true direction of the angular velocity and angular momentum for a disk that rotates in the clockwise direction. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Okay, so that's it for our brief introduction to angular momentum. The end.